Hayong Hapon! David, your traveling tutor, I'm coming to you from Tractor Cafe. You might have recognized this from a previous video, but I wanted to talk to you today about making chocolate. I'm in the process of starting a cacao plantation called Boss D Cacao Plantation. It's on Facebook. If you would follow on the Facebook page, you know, like it, that would be awesome. In the future, I'll be planting cacao trees, but right now I want to make my own chocolate. And I've been experimenting doing different things. Today I want to share with you a recipe that is a low glycemic dark chocolate recipe. Now it's very non-traditional and it's not high-tech by any means. I'm just gonna give you like all the ingredients and the amounts and how to cook and mix and stuff but I don't have a thermostat and I don't have fancy equipment and I don't know the fancy terminology for making chocolate so please forgive me in advance but I want to share this with you because it's something that I enjoy making for myself again it's low glycemic it's delicious it's a little rough you know it's not in a wet grinder uh, they call them melangers here in the Philippines the final product is is a little bit on the rougher side but it's just for my own pleasure and my own snacking but if you want to see what this is snap on your seat belts and get ready we're gonna take a ride and how to make low glycemic dark chocolate I'd want to take a couple of seconds here just to thank everybody that watched my Kuala Lumpur video. If you look at the uh, top geographies, Malaysia, 83.8%. Fantastic. But I also noticed that a lot of people were not subscribed to my channel. So if you would just take a moment, please subscribe. Uh, go ahead and hit like. These videos will be sent out to you so you can enjoy them. But again, thank you for watching my Kuala Lumpur video. I really appreciate Just it. Just walking around the property here. And I have plans for this property. Visited Chris Fadriga, his cacao plantation, and uh, discussed a couple of things with him about planting cacao on the property. And he thinks it's fantastic. But the property line goes almost up to that house and down the hill, way down the hill, and way back alongside of the back side of the house. This is going to be a really cool project. I'm gonna start out with a small amount of seedlings, you know, around 500, and then I'll go from there. The property should be able to hold about 2,000, and it's gonna take two, three years for them to start you know, maturing and becoming full-size producing trees. Probably about four years for that. You know, I love chocolate. It's one of my passions. This property really does afford that for sure. You know, if you would subscribe to uh, Boss D Cacao Plantation, you'll see that in your screen. That would be fantastic. Appreciate it so much. You can see the progress of the uh, cacao seedlings growing up <laughs> right off the national highway. So, <laughs> another reason that's a little loud. But also planting vanilla bean too. Just got done planting 50 vanilla bean plants. I'll take you over to those. They're growing on uh, Madre de Cacao, and we'll just keep those trimmed up. They'll grow and just chop chop them as as needed. the big tree. They're scattered all over, hoping to see some growth with these little vanilla seedlings soon, but they should do quite well here. You'll see the progress if you just go ahead and follow. If you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel as well, I'd appreciate that. You know, it's a fantastic crop to grow. You can get 20 to 30,000 pesos for a kilo of fermented and dried vanilla beans, believe it or not very high value crop. Filipinos, you should be growing a lot of vanilla beans. Just gonna keep walking up. And here is some more vanilla growing. You can see they're planted right by the uh, Madre de Caca. We'll just check on the progress of those. You know, I'll update you once in a while. So what I want to do is I want to make my own dark chocolate using probably non-traditional ingredients, but I think that you will find that this is a pretty good way to do it. I'm going to use one kilo of tablea from Davao, Davao's finest. I'm going to go ahead and use coconut oil. 
and also I'm gonna use coconut sugar. Now I understand that you know cacao butter is probably the best way you know to harden it and, and excuse me if I don't know all the terminology but I'm just trying to show you like my own attempt at making chocolate that's gonna be for myself I'm not gonna do this for resale in fact it's gonna sit in the freezer until I want to have a snack so it doesn't matter if I use coconut oil cacao butter lecithin to harden it you know all that stuff I'm not making commercial candy bars all right so I'm gonna take the tablea one kilo this is from Dava. I have no idea if this is Criollo, which I doubt. Probably Trinitario Tablea, which is fairly common from that area. But I take the uh, all of these uh, Tablea nibs into the pan. Okay, and you can see again, it's 100% pure. Next step, take about half of this coconut oil and pour it into the pan. Okay, here it goes. I'm doing this one-handed, so I will try and get about half of this in there without dripping all over everything else. Okay, that feels about right. It's about half or 150 grams. Typically, a, a milliliter is about a gram. All right, now I want to put this on a low, low heat. Put it on the lowest setting possible and just let this start to heat up and let that tablea melt. It's gonna take a while, but I'll turn the heat on and off so that I don't burn it. And I'll slowly get the temperature up to a point where I can actually go ahead and put in the uh, coconut sugar. My tool of choice is a bamboo spatula. It's kind of nice if you can get the one that has the slots in it because that will help mix this better. But like I said, it's gonna take a while for this to heat up. I've had this chilling in the, in the fridge so that it would stay cool. But you can see that it's already starting to, uh, to melt on the edges. So I'll continue to just slowly start to mix it up. It's good if you can mix up the bottom. You don't want it to burn. Um, but on a really low heat setting, that shouldn't happen. You know, if you have a, have a decent pan, uh, fluctuate the, the temperature, you know, on and off. Don't crank it up to the highest heat possible. Just slowly work up the temperature so that this tablet can melt in the oil. That will work really good. You know, it's starting to dissolve already. Patience and just let this slowly go up. You can turn the temperature, see I'll turn it off. I'll let this set for a couple of minutes and then I'll turn the heat back on. Again, this is not a race to melt your tablea. You want to liquefy it so that you can go ahead and add your sugar. But you do want to get the heat up on this because what I found in my last batch is that when I get the temperature up and it and it hardens again, you know, it'll actually harden up pretty well if I can get it to a nice hot temperature. Don't have a thermostat for you. I'm kind of winging it, but I will give you uh, a step-by-step -step, my best uh, my best thoughts. Okay, so you can see it's starting to get even more liquefied. Just again, just slowly, slowly heat this up. Don't burn it. What I like to do is just scrape the bottom of the pan to make sure that nothing is uh, getting built up or, or burned on the bottom. It's a slow process. You're just pouring it up to temperature slowly, 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 and uh, just keep working it. Most of it's melted. Now you can start to see some of the lighter parts of the the cacao starting to come out of the tablea. You know, as the temperature gets hotter and hotter, it will, you know, start to liquefy and uh, be ready for the sugar to go into it. Now, again, I do not claim to be a chocolatier expert at all. I've made one batch of uh, chocolate prior to this. <laughs> and I know that there's probably a much better way to do it, but this is the way that I've done it. This is the way that worked for me last time to make my own chocolate. So I just want to share it with you. It's fairly easy. I know that there's uh, there's wet grinders, but they're expensive in the Philippines. My gosh, you know, I looked and they're like 25,000 pesos. 
That's $500. Even a wet grinder, if you buy that from Amazon, you're looking at a couple hundred bucks, 200 to $300. I was like, you know what? I know that a wet grinder is the best way to do it, but I'm gonna try it my way. I'm gonna see what this does, see if this works. But you can tell that as this is, as the tablea has pretty much melted down to nothing, there's a couple of little nibs in there that I am scraping the bottom of this pan. I don't want it to heat up too much. And you really want a thick walled pan if you can. And I'm gonna turn the heat off and let it continue to heat up and continue to stir this. Do you see how those little slots allows the the liquid to go through instead of splashing up on the sides. So this type of bamboo spatula really has seemed to work the best <laughs> for my first batch and now my second batch. All right, this uh, batch is completely liquid right now. And if I go ahead and just lick it, it's probably at about, I don't know, 110 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's not that hot. So I've turned on the heat and I'm gonna to start to kick it up a little bit. Basically, the temperature that you want this to be at would be like hot tea. If you were gonna make yourself a cup of hot tea, the water in that tea, not boiling, not 200 and 100 Celsius, uh, 220 Fahrenheit, you know, probably um, the temperature of a cup of hot tea. That might be the best way to describe it. And what I do is I just take it and I just lick it, put it to my tongue and give it a taste. Tastes really super bitter. I can taste the coconut oil in it. Scrape the bottom of that pan with your flat spatula. Don't let it build up and get some kind of a nasty burn on the bottom. The tablea has a little bit of crunchy or, or rocky or grittiness to it so you can probably hear it in there that is the tablea itself whether it's some of the impurities i'm not really sure okay the chocolate has heated up to the correct temperature so i'm going to go ahead and add 500 grams of coconut sugar to this batch Stir it in there, slowly work it in. You can see how hot this is. It's getting dark outside, so I'm gonna go ahead and just slowly work this coconut sugar into my batch. Try and get out all those clumps. I'm thinking what ha what's happening is the coconut oil is gonna go ahead and bind with the tablea, of course, and it's gonna also bind with the coconut sugar. Thinking there's gonna be a good reaction. If anybody, you know, you can see the graininess of this starting to come into uh, to play here but the temperature really low temperature on this batch right now again I'm just checking the bottom just to make sure it's not getting burned I'm stirring that coconut sugar right in there you can see the the graininess of it and and the pieces of the coconut sugar too now because I have oil in here the coconut sugar is not going to dissolve the way it would in water okay I have stirred this and I've got it up to the temperature that I think is, you know, a hot cup of tea. If I look at the edge, I can see barely, barely kind of, this is not going to boil unless it gets really, really too hot actually, but little tiny movement on the edge. So again, I'm going to stir it. You can see the cream of the tablea coming out on the top. I've added the sugar. Just going to let this cool down and stir it. All right, so it's the next day. I've taken the uh, chocolate that was in the pan, I've let it cool down, and what I did was I poured it into ice cube trays. This is this is what happens. It turns into these nice little cubes here. I, I'll just store them in a container, just eat them as I want. An ice cube tray works really good, but you gotta be careful when you try and twist it, crack these open. <laughs> Make sure that this, you level this off so it's not as thick as, as I did it there or else your tray will break. So just keep that in mind. Finished product right there, ready to eat. And it tastes delicious. This is the finished product of low glycemic dark chocolate. Not very pretty, but very tasty. All right, so I hope you enjoyed watching me make my own version of low glycemic dark chocolate. It's quite easy. It's not going to stay at room temperature, but you'll enjoy it. Just keep it in your fridge or your freezer and just snack on it when you want to try it.
Guys, please stay tuned. I'm gonna be heading to Mindanao next week. I'll be filming with somebody that I had traveled with in the past, and uh, we're gonna do a little bit of adventure, riding, exploring in Mindanao. So stay tuned for that. I wanna thank you for watching, and I will see you on the very next video. Thank you.